before the proper stream begins. Ladies and gentlemen, it is 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which means it is once again time for joystick streams. And time is a significant factor here today. Oh, I wah, wah. That's, cool. That's what <laughs> you did. I couldn't, I couldn't resist it. I couldn't resist it. Uh, my name is Anthony John Agnello, Joystick Community Manager, and joining me today are a, a couple of illustrious human beings. Also from Joystick is our own editor, Mike Suzik. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing great. Super! <laughs> Time Force! Bam! And also, we have Mr. Nathan Vela of Capybara Games in Toronto. Nathan, how are you doing? Doing wonderful. Hello, stream. Hello, all of, all of the internet all at once. <laughs> Everything at once. That is an awesome Super Chunk song that I wish I could remember all of the lyrics to because I would be singing along to it. Uh, but we will not be listening to Super Chunk or the Sanford and Sons theme song much, although that might happen. We are going to be listening to the crunchy jams that play in the background of Super Time Force, Capybara's uh, new game for Xbox 360 and Xbox One. Uh, Super Time Force is... Nathan, you, you, you gotta be with me here. Super Time Force is not a game that is super easy to describe right off the bat. It is a traditional shooter in the vein of Contra and Metal Slug and a lot of other games from the late 80s and early 90s, but it's quite a bit more than that. Uh, it is... Nathan, how would you describe Super Time Force's uh, it, its, per, its particular blend of spices? Uh, so Super Time Force is its a run-and-gun platformer, uh, emphasis on the gun, uh, and it's basically built around two main ideas. Number one is uh, blowing a lot of stuff up, and number two is being able to rewind time whenever you want uh, to blow more stuff up. Um, Super Time Force basically gives you control of time and allows you to enter, I'm air quoting but you can't see it, uh, time out mode. Um, and that basically lets you scrub back through your playthrough, choose a moment, hop back into the action, maybe as a different character, uh, and uh, and explode more stuff. Um, and probably see a lot more jokes while you're at it. Yeah. Uh, I am going to warn everybody watching, I have, uh, I have actually done something that crushed me a little bit inside. I erased my save game. Oh no, you didn't. I did, so we could hop back into the very beginning of the game. And frankly, I, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to retackling this from the start, uh, because my my carefully honed skills uh, of, of super time at Super Time Force, well, frankly, they weren't that carefully honed. I am awful at this game. Uh. <laughs> Every, everybody who starts this game, and that's that's another kind of like big point of the game, is that um, it's not it, it is it is not meant to be a, a kind of like simple, you know, really shallow kind mm. of like, oh, okay, this is a platformer. Uh, it's actually, you know, a really challenging game that requires you to kind of get a hold of the controls, get a hold of time travel, get a hold of the different characters, um, and get a hold of the idea that there are collectibles and ways of saving yourselves, ways of powering up by saving yourself, um, and there are different uses for time travel in the game. So yeah, uh, it's it's, it's, defi it's definitely got a bit of a, a a bit of a curve to it, and that's the type of game that we love to play. That's the type of game that we love to make. We love to we love playing games that require you to really figure it out first, um, and it won't take you long, uh, but it will take you longer than it does on maybe some of the more um, easyified games of our that, that we're all kind of used to. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'll tell you, there is a moment uh, when you're playing Super Time Force where you literally have to force your brain to stop thinking of it like it's Mega Man. You have to say to yourself, that is not how this works. And there is a moment where things click into place where you say to yourself, all right, well, here are all the things that I have to juggle. Here is how I am going to plan. Like, all right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this character for, like... 25 seconds, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have them intentionally die right here, and then I'm going to rewind a few seconds, 
and then get them, and then play ten more seconds, and then rewind all the way back to the beginning, and yep. bring out another person. And, yep. it, man, it is tough to do that with your brain. Uh, so everybody in the chat, we are right at the beginning. This is the grand introduction when uh, Professor Rapitsky, who has discovered the secret of time travel, is is met by his badass future self who wears two eye patches and many medals and has made it his business to go through time fixing things that he has deemed in need of fixing. Uh, like the like the extinction of the dinosaurs, or the fact that your phone constantly needs software updates. Uh, everybody hates everybody hates uh, hates upgrades. Uh, yeah, they're, they're the worst. <laughs> uh, something that everybody should know while you're in the chat is that we are not just playing Super Time Force today. We are also giving away mm -hmm. uh, many copies of the game for Xbox 360 and Xbox One. Uh, now, some of these codes are just going to be popped directly into the chat. They are first come, first serve, and you need to hop on those things quick because they go fast. Uh, and some of them, we may, we may just ask you to do bizarre things. We may ask you inane trivia about candy-like runts. And the first person that answers our insane questions and meets our demands will receive a private message with a code therein. Uh, Mike is going to be uh, listening to your myriad questions and talking with you and talking to Nate as well. Because I am about to, like, be a member of the Super Time Force. And let me tell you, that requires... It's demanding. It is demanding. It's demanding is the word. Yeah, I've tried to demo the game while also talking about the game. Uh, it's it's quite a challenge. The only person who can actually do that is uh, Super Time Force co-creator, lead programmer Kenneth Young. Uh, he's he's actually done like an hour uh, live stream with interview questions while uh, beating like two worlds of the game. It's oh, it's pretty. He's he's kind of he is super, but he did also like. Made the game. <laughs> he also came up with it, right? Yes. So that that doesn't necessarily count. So actually, Nathan, I do have a question for you. You know, Super Time Force has been in development for a while. This is a game yep. that took some time. It's a very complicated game, and it you know the development of it reflects that. When did uh, Super Time Force first go into production? So the, the game, the story behind the game is is kind of uh, it's pretty unique in the sense that. Uh, a couple years ago, uh, three of the guys from the studio, uh, Kenneth Young and uh, twin brother artist Mike and Vic Nguyen, uh, went to what is uh, known as the Toronto Game Jam or TO Jam. And basically it's a, it's a three day game jam where hundreds of people in Toronto get together and try to make a game in three days. Uh, and they went and the theme was, uh, they usually theme these things and they're called, the theme was uh, what just happened? And so Ken and Mike and Vic thought like, oh, maybe what if you're playing alongside what just happened, literally? And so in the three days, they jammed together the kind of guts of what Super Time Force was, the ability to rewind time uh, and the kind of like adding and creating an army of yourself, basically the single player co-op idea. Um, and so I... Uh, they brought the game back to the studio and all of us who played it were just kind of blown away like wow this is really stupid and amazing and fun and ridiculous um, but everybody was kind of working on games already so we said okay what if we just work on this game like one day a week what if every Friday Kenneth and Mike and Vic get to just jam on the game a little bit more and we'll see what happens and we did that for a really long time uh, probably about eight months or so so in eight months we probably spent all of 30 days on the game um, and around then was when we started talking to Microsoft, uh, specifically Chris Charla, who now heads up the ID at Xbox program. Um, and he played the game and loved it and uh, started talking to us about bringing it to Xbox. And we just kind of said, hey, like, it's just a pet project and they didn't care. Um, instead, we don't really know when we're going to go into full production. They didn't really care. Um, they just kind of wanted the game on the platform. And so that was when we started thinking, well, maybe we should actually make this into a full game. Um, and that was probably partway through production. Um, 
almost, it took us almost about almost a year before it was actually like a real full happy game. Um, and then when that did happen, uh, we had a lot of fun, and it took us a long time to kind of figure it out because uh, it was super challenging. So it, it went from like a like a you know three four person team one day a week to a three or four person team five days a week to a larger game where uh, yeah where basically the whole team was working on it. Um, or the whole Super Time Force team ended up shipping it. Um, oh. So yeah, and basically one of the key parts for us was we brought the game to a lot of PAXs um, and got players to watch and enjoy it. And while they were watching and enjoying, we kind of watched them play and learned about what was cool about the game and what sucked about the game. And because of that, we were able to, uh, to basically tune it and figure out what was fun and what wasn't. Um, this is the most I've ever seen a human being die on this. <laughs> I was waiting. <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to notice the fact that I was actually mistiming my shield so badly. <laughs> you, you, uh, you did it after I called you out, though. <laughs> uh, at least, you, at least you, you you stood up to that challenge. Yeah, yeah. I I I, I, I acquitted myself well in that moment. So I would also like to mention that uh, I don't appreciate that it took all of three seconds from the point of Toronto mention to Rob Ford joke. Uh, uh, that was quick. That was quick. That, it's usually like three and a half seconds, but it was like, uh, thanks, thanks for rubbing it in, stream. Thanks for rubbing it in, Chad. How about like, you know, can we get Toronto Raptors DLC? Can we get Toronto Blue Jays DLC? I don't know where else. That's almost as painful as Rob Ford, by the way. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just joking. I love it. But, uh, but you know, part of the, the quick questions people had was immediately about DLC. And, yeah. and you were, you, before the stream started, you were already talking about how development never really stopped with Super Time Force once the game came out. You guys are constantly moving and kind of working on things. Like, do you have a, a structure as to what we're going to see in the near future for that? Um, we still haven't really figured out exactly what we're what we're gonna do. We just there's a few things that need to get fixed on the patch front. There's a couple of bugs that we want to sort out. We want to make sure that it's you know the best possible experience for players, and that if they put 15 bucks down, they're getting you know everything and a little bit more. Um, so that's our main focus right now. Um, in terms of DLC, we still haven't even decided yet. It's you know it launched less than a week ago, so we're kind of just sitting in like, okay, there's nothing really broken about the game, which makes me feel great, uh, but there are a few things we want to resolve, so that's that's our focus right now. Um, in terms of like DLC and stuff, we, we, you know, we're definitely going to uh, consider it, that's for sure. Uh, but beyond that, we're, we're not, I'm not going to confirm nor deny anything. <laughs> right. Oh! And, uh, and you know, like, uh, one of the things I thought of is that it, it seems like with this game, you have to, not necessarily more than other games, but it really seems like you have to be more careful about the balance and uh, of, of the difficulty of levels if you decide to introduce a new character with sort of new powers and such, right? I mean, that, it, it seems like more than other games, that would be something that would be pretty concerning, right? I don't know if I'm off on that. Yeah, I, I, I think there's... Well, it's it, we're very lucky in the sense that uh, the main gameplay mechanic, which is, like... Dying or timing out, rewinding and adding more characters to your army means that like dying a whole bunch does kind of make things a little bit uh, easier. It, it is your your a way of balancing the game for itself almost. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest challenge that we had was like, holy cow, is it ever uh, hard to come up with levels that are always fun, that are always like super challenging, that are always. Uh, you know, really uh, enjoyable for people who understand the core mechanic, and so the the balance is very different in that sense, and it it does get uh, it does get to become like a massive challenge in level design. And uh, Dan Vader, who was the the lead level designer on the project, who basically designed most of the levels, um, he will he will definitely agree that it's a really challenging game, not just to balance in terms of like skill. But to balance in terms of like constantly being able to play the game in different styles with different like there's 16 different characters in the game that that means that like there there always has to be a way to for us to know how certain players are going to play it with certain characters um, and we did our best to actually build in some uh, 
you know, some characters are actually better against certain bosses and are better on certain levels. And if people play the game strategically, they might actually realize that. Oh um, yeah, and you need to figure that stuff out right away. Like, part of like going into those boss fights is figuring out which of these characters you're supposed to be using. Because getting getting through those fights is so hard until like you sort of reveal the secret to a your own playstyle and like how your brain is working when you tackle them, and also like which of those characters is built for it. Yeah. I I am not good with the dinosaur, and I want to be because I love him. He, there's a couple <laughs> levels in the game where he just absolutely tears it up. Also, he has a, a special skill that very few people have found out in that uh, you'll notice that he is riding on a skateboard, which means that when you jump on top of things, you're not hitting those things uh, skateboard is. So, uh, spoiler, but... Oh my god, why did I never realize that? Yep, wow. he does have some head stomping abilities. Uh, that's, that's a super spoiler for all of you out there. So wait a second, there is... There's an achievement for that, isn't there? Yes, there is. There's the head stopper achievement. I swear to God, I sat there trying to figure out how to do that, and like I like I was trying to head stomp dinosaurs, and I was like, you know what? No, I'm I'm out. <laughs> like I continue to die. I'm gonna stop doing this now. Yeah, it's uh, there are a couple characters that have that skill. I told you one of them, but there's there is there is another uh, who is also amazing. If you can figure that one out as well. Here we go. So this is this is the other thing that becomes the trick of playing these levels. It's not just about surviving. I cannot believe I missed that. It's lining things up so you can get all of the glorbs. Yep. Which are are not just random collectibles. The glorbs will give you a a, a another chance to rewind. Which yep. is your your essentially your version of lives. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not specifically lives in the sense that like you die and you lose them, but you can also use them when you don't die. You can press the B button and that'll actually cause it's it's almost like being able to like auto kill yourself. Right. But it's, that's but it's different in the sense that it doesn't involve killing yourself. Um, so yeah, that's your your basically your tool. Um, and it's extremely powerful, and that's another one of the things that is, like, does require you to kind of wrap your head around. Um, but we think, you know, uh, there, there is definitely uh, a certain way that you can play the game where you're going to need to have all of those, like, collect as many dwarves as you can to get uh, all of the, the extra kind of rewinds because you're just going to be throwing an entire army. And you can brute force certain parts if you really want to brute force them. Um, that's where the globes come in super handy. But also just the act of like catching things flying through the air while you're in slow mo uh, also uh, is is very important to us because that's just silly crazy fun. Man, I there there were definitely moments where I had to brute force my way through some of those bosses just because I like I I could feel my brain being like I just I can't remember what I did. I can't. I can't keep everything straight. Uh, and there's that moment where, uh, you know, we were talking before about, like, the fact that you really need to sort of get your head around, uh, all right, well, I have this amount of time, and I can actually manipulate it. I can manipulate time so that I can go back this far. But you need to remember to let some of your characters die sometimes in order to best utilize them going back into the past. Yeah, like, I mean, uh, like, because, uh, so, for those of the, the, the viewers not super familiar with the game, uh, if you go faster than your past lives and kill the enemy before they shot a bullet that killed one of your past lives, that means that that bullet was never shot, which means that that enemy or that character of yours never died. And so that's how you actually, like, those are the actual power-ups of the game. By saving characters, you can actually team up with those characters. You get an extra hit point so you don't die in one hit, but you also get their special attack stacked on top of your special attack. So you can have, uh, like in the case what we're, what we're seeing on screen, uh, you have Jean Rambois teamed up with Amy McKillen, 
So you have a spread attack plus a laser sniper all at once. Um, and being able to, like, there are 250 combos in the game if you have all of your characters unlocked. And there are certain combos that are just amazing in certain situations. So, um, actually doing that and, like, spending the time and energy to save your past lives can actually make the game way crazier, but also, uh, like, way more fun, or in some cases, way easier. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have lots of questions about uh, about how you guys have time working, but we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Everybody, hang tight. We're gonna have more codes and everything coming too, so just stay with us. And for those of you with Twitch Turbo, you're still here. Don't worry about it. You're still watching us, and you get this special treat. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the the stream is about to catch up to this, but this is the first moment uh, where you rescue uh, somebody, and this is how you get the secret characters in the game. Now, well, the unlockable characters, at least. Uh, the first one is Jeff Leopard, who comes with the incredibly, incredibly useful rocket launcher. Uh, Jeff became, like, my go-to guy. Yeah, uh, Jeff, is, Jeff is super powerful, um, but his his shots are also quite slow, um, and you can, and because his primary attack is a grenade launcher and they bounce in crazy ways, you can either use that hugely to your advantage or you end up missing <laughs> completely. So it needs to be used with care. But his his rocket launcher is is amazing in certain situations, or he's probably one of the more useful or more widely useful characters in the game. He is he is a great boss fight character. That Absolutely. that that Jeff Leopard. He's also he's also a great uh, yeah he's great at supporting other characters in boss fights, um, or you can just kind of stack him in boss fights, and that's that really powerful too. Mm -hmm. So tricky. Lots of rewinds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so well, that's, that's, that's the way to play, man. That's, yeah. I was, I was that, not being hypercritical. I was actually. Um, I'm, it, it always makes us super happy to see people understanding that, that rewinding and death is is gameplay in the game. It's not just this like, oh, I screwed this up. It's it's actually like the thing that you we designed the game for you to do. I mean, yeah, you can, you can play it, and if you're a super ninja, you might not die that much. But the way that we play it in the office is tons of rewinds, and and, and sometimes you just have to do that, and other times it makes a lot of sense, uh, you know, to to do it on purpose. Yeah, there there were definitely, and I, the the moment that I think it really really started to click to me, and I I think we'll be able to get to this level so people can see it was the moment where you you first go into Atlantis. Yeah. And one of the one of the time periods, one of the places that Dr. Rapitsky decides that he's going to change time is he wants to stop Atlantis from sinking. Because and so, it turns out that Atlantis was actually a really fun theme park. Right. <laughs> right. Because, you know, we don't really know what Atlantis was, we just kind of pretend like it's this thing, but instead it was actually kind of like Atlantic City. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, you know, like beach bums hanging out, just chilling. Uh, oh, how did I do? Yeah, alright, I got two badges. Um, so, so, Nathan, here's one question I have, and I don't, I don't want you to answer it right away. I, what I want to do is try and turn this into a giveaway for our, our viewers. Um... Do you, do you guys have a specific, let's say, a film inspiration for dealing with time in this game and, and time travel in this game? Mm -mm. Do you, is there one that stands out in your mind? Um, in terms of the actual time travel itself, uh, that's like the one thing that we didn't rip as many jokes as possible out of. Um, <laughs> that one was like the because when we started working on the game, it was. Uh, the idea it was kind of already created. That was the one thing that we didn't need references for. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I can't really think off the top of my head. That would be a better question for, for the for the for the designers themselves. But I can I can you can definitely see the the filmic influence uh, mostly from us uh, turning 
uh, some time periods from films into time periods in the game, uh, some characters, uh, and basically 90% of the jokes are us uh, making fun of our favorite 90s and 80s flicks. Uh, is there maybe, like, because what I'm trying to think of is if we can get our, uh, our dear viewers to, to guess maybe a personal favorite of yours. Uh, oh. Is there one maybe that comes to mind that you can say, yes, definitely that? Because I'm seeing people are already dropping. You know, we've, we've got Back to the Future. We have Memento. We have 12 Monkeys. <laughs> I'm seeing yeah. Stargate, uh, I, Time I, Cop. I, I definitely have my favorite. Um, and, and it was also uh, the, the one thing that I'm sad that we didn't get into the game was a moment where all of the Super Time Force accidentally kissed their mother. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so... If you, if you can tell what my favorite is from that joke, then we're friends, and also, that's the answer. Oh my god. It's big trouble in Little China, everybody. No, nope, that's not true. That's a lie. We already have so many people that are naming ones. Uh, and yes, Memento wasn't really time travel. Yes, of course. I mean, at this point, people are just naming, you know. <laughs> just naming Ooh. things and hoping to get a code. Uh, you know, the things I do. Uh, to try and come up with. Uh, I mean, uh, are you seeing the chat, Nathan? Can you tell me if anybody's gotten it right? Because I don't want to guess and just give the answer away either. Oh, Mike, you don't know what it is? I think I know, but I mean... Oh, God, I don't even... Yeah, I I, I mean... Oop, it's, oop, oop. it's pretty clear. Uh, there is a very famous film in which Marty McFly... Yes, uh, that's what I thought. Okay, so... yeah. What's yeah. the matter, McFly? Chicken? So, uh, let, I'm going up the stream, and it looks like our first Back to the Future one was Daniel9666. Woo! Congratulations, uh, Daniel. And uh, I would like to know, Daniel, what, uh, what do you want to get? Uh, like, we have two different consoles. What's your preference, Xbox One and Xbox 360? I'll message you. How about that? Look at me doing my job. Yeah. On the internet. On my, my internet job. This is good. I like giving things away. I mean, that's that's oh. that's the best part, right? That's what it's all about. All right, I'm gonna rewind, rewind. This is the other thing that really like forces you to start learning how the time travel works. Is when that that 60 second timer sitting at the top of the screen, you'll be like, oh my god, I'm still only at the beginning of the level. Why do I only have 20 seconds left? And then you're like, wait a second, I don't have only 20 seconds left. I can. Yeah, time management is uh, is very important in the game. That's for sure. Uh, you need to be able to understand that there are a whole series of past yous that are doing all this stuff for you. Right. Um, so you can go back pretty far, um, and that is what buys you the chance to actually like move quicker through the level. That if like there's a whole bunch of yous that are completing certain tasks that you don't need to complete, like going and finding the hidden glorbs, or like going down a tunnel that has a dead end to pick up a, a to save a character, maybe, or to rescue a new character. Um, you can just let your lives do that, and you can keep going through the game, and that's how uh, that's how it, it basically like how you manage the clock. Um, because you can't exist in you can't time travel infinitely. You can't just be in a different time zone forever. Uh, anybody who's watched any of these films know that there's a limit to how long or to the before like the butterfly effect kicks in. Mm -hmm. ooh, ooh, come on, give me that John Rambo. Sorry, I'm sitting here struggling to get my character who I saved intentionally to join me. Team up. Team up. So yeah, now but... for for a question that's purely cosmetic, um, I have a huge affinity for games that start with the word super. <laughs> it, was that was it cool for you? I mean, thinking back to like a, a bygone era, to know that you're you are uh, you are in charge of a studio that's releasing a game that starts with super. Like, is there some sort of uh, you know, and not only that, it, just the design of the game, the style of it. Is there something that's sort of nostalgic for you, to, oh, Nathan, gosh. to like to bring this out? Yeah, I mean, it's this is actually the second title that we've released with the, with right, the right. name Super. Uh, our very first game before we were even a studio was called uh, Super Shove Shove. Um, 
uh, which no one has ever seen nor heard of. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it was very. It, the whole the whole idea behind the game is that it is meant to be a throwback to the things that we love, but it's not meant to be a game that relies purely on nostalgia. That it's us combining uh, old school and new school, or us combining, uh, you know, uh, the. The way that we always are, the, one of my favorite quotes from our creative director, Chris, is, uh, is you know, Super Time Force isn't what happens when Braid and Contra have a baby. <laughs> it's what happens when Braid and Contra have a party. <laughs> I like that. That's, I like that a lot. And that's kind of how we looked at it. It was like, yeah, there are definitely, like, old school uh, kind of mentalities built into the game. But that's not what the game is really about at all, and it's you know we really believe that the style of the game, both uh, aesthetically and musically and, and gameplay wise, um, are, it's all done for a reason. It's all done intentionally, and it's and it's all about for us like putting those things forward and making sure that they're you know as stylish and as amazing sounding and as uh, deep as possible, which I think is very kind of like. Uh, um, um, more modern approach to video games. Um, as a studio, that's what, we, that's what we all about, we're all about. All of our games, we, I, I think, um, and I'm, I'm probably sound like a cocky butthole right now, but <laughs> I think all of our games have their own visual style and their own design style, and that's that's kind of how we define ourselves. That's who we are, and that's what we love to do in games is, is make these kind of like beautiful looking, beautiful sounding, tightly designed, strange little things. Nathan, that's actually something that, that interests me, is that you, like, you know, there is a very distinct aesthetic quality between all of Cappy's different games, but there was a, a very sort of dramatic shift that happened after uh, Sword and Sorcery EP, because there was the, the period before Sword and Sorcery where you had, you know, uh, Critter Crunch and um, Clash of Heroes, Yep. Is that right? Clash of Heroes? Am I getting yep. the title right? I you played are. that start to finish on DS, and man, my now wife, we were just starting to date, and there were nights where I would go over to her apartment and just, like, lie on the couch swearing at my <laughs> DS, just cursing out my DS, be like, No! Get to the boss! And she's like, What are you doing? I'm like, Nothing! It's not Clash of Heroes, don't worry about it. It's not puzzles and RPGs and me going insane. Uh... But both of those games had this very uh, anime-inspired art style, this, this bright colors and big-eyed animated characters, very cartoony. And then after Sword and Sorcery, Ka Cappy's games have a very, um, very spare pixel quality. And, you know, obviously Super Time Force looks very different from Below, it looks very different from Sword and Sorcery, it looks very different from... Uh, sound shapes, which I know you guys collaborated on with Queasy Games. Yeah. But so what? What happened? Where you guys sort of went left left behind that that bigger anime ish cartoon art style? Um. Yeah. I mean, really, uh, for us, uh, before kind of like Critter Crunch was very influenced by Miyazaki and mm. by uh, like old Disney films. And then Clash of Heroes was kind of us, uh, like, on DS it was very kind of, like, trying to do the, the like, trying to make very cute pixels. Mm. Uh, and then on 360, in the HD version, was definitely more inspired by traditional anime. Um, with, when Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery happened, uh, for us it was um, a, a whole bunch of, like, things coming together. Uh, us kind of getting to the point where we were finally able to make uh, our own games, our own way, without publishers, without you know any kind of requirements. All of like everything about Sword and Sorcery was uh, you know Cappy, Super Brothers, and Jim Guthrie working on our own on our own thing, and that was a, a, a really important part of it for us. Was because it was the like first stab or first step into us uh, you know being totally independent and being in complete control of those elements. Um, the fact that Super Time Force was the next game that we released after Sorcery was totally unintentional, really. Um, the fact that they were both pixel, but very different stylistically. But I think if you look at uh, our two projects, 
kind of now, which, you know, Time Force just came out and, and we've been showing a bunch of uh, below lately, uh, they probably couldn't get more stylistically different or more tonally different or more gameplay different. Um, and that's something that we're really proud of and it's really important to us is at, at the studio is that, like, we're making kind of two super crazy different games at the same time. Uh, and I think it really shows uh, the, you know, at least for me, and, and I'm a little bit uh, <laughs> a little bit biased, but I think it shows the, the crazy talent that we've got in the studio and also just like, why we're why we're doing what we're doing is to be able to do this, to be able to have two crazily different games being in development at once. Mm. Uh, and that's, I mean, that's, you know, we've been a studio for nine years now, and that's what we set out to do in the very beginning, and uh, to be at the point where that is kind of what Cappy is all about, it's it's very gratifying to all of us. Most of the studio has been around for, for many, many years. We've been lucky enough to have an amazing crew of people that have, you know, believed in the talent of the studio and believed in our ability to make some crazy stuff and uh, you know that the the visual style and the audio style whether it was working with 6955 on Super Time Force working with Jim on on Below and on uh, Sorcery uh, or kind of like seeing the audio design through our audio director Sean Lorish like all of those things kind of coming together hopefully have, have hopefully like players who care about that kind of stuff will notice the effort that we put into that kind of stuff. Mm. I don't know if everybody has picked up on this by watching us play through, uh, but one of the most satisfying parts of Super Time Force is in the moment, you can feel like you're going crazy, thinking like, oh my god, how am I going to beat this? What is happening? And then when you actually do succeed, it is a delight to see the madness you have wrought in a replay at the end of the level. Although I, I will readily admit, Nathan, that there were times when I when I finally beat the far future level where you get sucked into the internet to fight the yeah. boss. Yeah. When I when I finished that I was like, No more! No! I don't wanna see the replay! Don't show me that! I can't even I can't even handle it. I cannot even handle it. I think there's there's a I don't know about you guys, but one of my favorite things about video games is that like that thin line between uh, rage and and passion or yes. like, obscene frustration and uh, enjoyable frustration, and that that I mean that's the biggest challenge in development of that game. Yeah, it was it was like trying not to go too darn hard, uh, where people would actually freak out, but trying to make it hard enough that people would die a bunch and you know maybe get a, a, a little bit frustrated uh, Jack Z attack says one thing I loved about this game is uh, I loved all of Dr. Infinity's boss battles at the end of each era and uh, so yeah Nathan like tell me a little bit about how you guys design the boss battles around the sort of like levels and themes and stuff because uh, you got a compliment out of it you should, you should tell us yeah, a little bit about it well, thanks for the thanks for the kind words that we had a lot of fun. The bosses were some of the most challenging components of development um, because they're, the, the time travel mechanic kind of works extremely well when there's you know long distances and you're scrolling back and any of your lives can be in any of the different time periods. With boss battles, we're lo almost locking you entirely in a single room and that means that there's like you know 10, 20, 30 of you uh, in the same place at the same time. Uh, and so we had to find ways where, like, when you have that full army blasting, uh, that there was still a challenge there, that was still something to do, that were, there were always different phases. Um, and so we went, I think the most iterated on thing in the entire development was was the boss battles. Um, and anyone who has, uh, who's who's beaten the game or has made it to the, the final levels, uh, you'll definitely know that there is a lot of ways for us to ratchet it up to 12. Um, and then getting to that point was, was very challenging for us, for sure. I mean, that's probably the final, the last thing that we that we got final in the game was was the boss battles because we just kept coming back to them, trying to look at them through different lenses, trying to find out how like, oh, if you play as this character during this phase, you totally tear through them and you don't even need an army. Uh, that kind of stuff was super or super important to us. <laughs> Nathan, who decided? When ever, whenever the Super Time Force enters a stage, when their pod lands, who decided that every single landing 
would result in horrific murder. Um, <laughs> I don't. I, it. We started out doing it like just once in the very first level in the very first demo uh, that we ever brought to PAX, and uh, we kind of were like, okay, if people think that this is funny, then maybe we'll do it some more. Uh, and the fact that that's how every level begins or every world begins. Uh, Basically, came entirely from people laughing at it at PAX. <laughs> so, All thanks, right. thanks to everyone who laughed at it at PAX. Oh. All right, we're going to be gone for 30 more seconds. Uh, stay with us. We do have somewhere in the neighborhood, it looks like five more codes to give away. I got to get on that. We got to come up with some giveaway stuff. Uh, so, we'll be right back. What? Up? Um, what do we do? How do, what do, we, how do we give things away? How do we. We got to <laughs> challenge people. You know, we gotta. All right, gotta yeah, we gotta we gotta challenge people. We gotta challenge people. So we actually have we have a little bit of time to think about that. Well, Mike, we do have a a. Oh, why do I always fall for that door? Every time I fall for that stupid door, Nathan. God, I'm in the medieval stage. Just beefing it is what I'm doing. They're the most dangerous doors in the world, man. They are, <laughs> they are killer. In case you couldn't tell by the spikes, they're there to hurt you. I, I do it every time. Every time. It's like, it really is a test of memory as much as anything else. Because, you know, you can sit there and say, all right, well, I'm going to rewind now, I'm going to rewind now. And there, you can go too far. You can decide to multitask too much, and it just destroys you, which yeah, is I mean, cool. Like, there's really no, like, the, the game's kind of like failure cases, or like when you can tell that you're sucking, uh, are entirely not damaging. Yeah. The, the worst case scenario uh, is that you time out or die and rewind, um, and then you have another character. They might not do anything important, but the worst case is that they're there. So, yeah, I mean, it, we, we spent a lot of time and worked really hard to make sure that there was kind of like, the challenge was not, uh, was, was never punishing you for, for making silly mistakes. Uh, the challenge was you as a player wanting to do better. Yeah. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but or if the stream has caught up, but I have, like, fallen into a loop of trying to, like, rescue one of the characters, oh, yeah. and I am I am just caught in an endless death cycle. <laughs> we, uh, we call that uh, time forcing, where you're <laughs> trying to force a scenario, you're trying to, like, you're like, I'm gonna do this. Uh, nice. But what ends up happening is that when you do that, you end up playing way worse than you used to be playing. Yes, absolutely. You play terribly when you start trying to force it. When you time force it... Oh, man. Again. These guys and their stupid spears. All right. Uh, I have... I, I, oh, you got one? You got one, Mike? Uh, well, I know that Susan had just dropped the idea. Um... We've done this before, but a uh, a time-related haiku. Oh, I love or it. Haiku on the topic of time. Uh, I'm in, I'm in favor of that. How do you guys feel about reading some haiku? I'm into it. The first person to give us a dope haiku. I mean, a dope one. You know, a dope just, one. Not just time, 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 time. Yeah. That doesn't work for me. Uh, five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. We it, know it, this. It, um, I, I'm going to go as far as to say that Easy E would have had to refer to your haiku as fresh for it to get a pass. Uh, let's, yeah. And Susan says our favorite, not the first. Correct. Because right now, G Vizo says, I love time travel. It is always flowing. It never stops, man. <laughs> That's, that, I, I like that one. That one's pretty good. Let's see if anybody could beat that. Uh, See, now I have to count uh, syllables, so like, this was a real great idea for a live stream. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm the guest, so I don't have to count syllables, right? Yeah, no, you're, I think you're, I think you're exempt, uh, from counting, Nathan. Alright. Uh, I'm actually not that good at counting. Blackjack, uh, Blackjax says, uh, man, these are going quick. A terrible death, a miraculous rebirth, control-alt-delete. 
<laughs> all right. All right. Uh, we also have j a super time force, united to beat evil. They cannot be beat. Yeah, I think so far, I really like g v i z o s I love time travel. It is always flowing. Never stops, man. Because if you can get a haiku that says, like, man or dude in it, I'm usually in favor. <laughs> you're, you're all about it. Mm -hmm. You're, uh, you're we, a man of the classics, Mike. <laughs> we also have a r a n s a l u s who says, time pushes forward. Inevitably, you die. Super time force, go! <laughs> <laughs> That, that's pretty good. Theory of Game says time looping backwards, explosions keep compounding, eventual win. Uh, I, think, I, don't, I think we might be off on some syllables on that. So far, I do think a r a n s a l u s time pushes forward, inevitably you die, super time force go. How do you guys feel so far about this? I'm liking it, actually. It's the, it's the super time force go at the end that really puts it over the top. Uh, How do you yeah, feel? Yeah, yeah. Nathan, you're our haiku expert, so... Yeah, I, I, I think that one's... Uh, Super Time Force Go is, is pretty much the, the optimal way to, uh, to, to end a haiku about Super Time Force. Mm -hmm. uh, And also, while we're at it, I, I mean, that... Serious 654's man, dude, 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 <laughs> man, man, is, uh, that's, that's almost the best. That But is very, that's very, really, really close. That one's close to my heart, but let's just be real. I'm not a, yeah. I'm not a creative writer. Uh, yeah. I think I think we're gonna go with uh, with uh, let's see I have to go back up a r a n s a l u s time pushes forward inevitably you die super time force go is our winner we're gonna pick that one uh, what do you, we still have Xbox One and we also have Xbox 360 codes so uh, I will send you a little message there and we'll get you set up congratulations this is our very our very next I I have a little I have a little bit of a trivia question. Since we're playing the uh, Holy Grail Quest-themed medieval stage, tell me this, folks. When Indiana Jones is on his quest to find the Holy Grail, how many people does the Holy Grail kill? The first person to get it right in the chat will get a code. Well, I'm Mike, actually really excited to learn this because I don't know the answer. Do you know how many people? How it's the Grail specifically. How many people does the Grail kill? Gosh, that's a that is I <laughs> okay. Somebody please answer that correctly so that I can then pretend that I knew this and impress my wife. All right, wait. Yup, Love Station Zero got it. Only one person is killed directly by the Grail. And that's uh, the god, the bad guy, the American. Um, god, now I can't even think of his name. The one who funds Indiana Jones' trip in the first place, because everybody else that dies in the temple is killed by traps, and Ilsa, his would-be German Nazi girlfriend, doesn't get killed by the Grail. She gets killed by her desire for the Grail. So it's only one. Only yeah. one. And now I know. And knowing is <laughs> half the battle. Knowing is half the battle of being in the super time force. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just confess right now. I almost did not succeed at beating this level. I like, I was sitting there being like, oh man, I am starting to run low on timeout and rewinds. I am going to not even be able to beat the first section. I did unlock Merlin though, who is my favorite character in the game. He does have a special skill of turning robots into chickens. <laughs> I love. I just like that he's like wearing a loincloth. I like that you guys went with the crazy old man depiction of Merlin. He is a crazy old man. If anybody watched the the uh, stupid Time Force cartoon trailers that we put out, uh, the latest one has some Merlin in it, and he's he's old. <laughs> I'm gonna bring him back out right now. Uh. That is something. Now that we're onto this stage with the sweet missile uh, battering ram, something that interests me about Super Time Force is it would have been enough to just have the shooting stages. Those are a challenge in and of themselves. Why did you guys decide to go with sort of the escort style missions? Because there are a few of these. 
Um, there's, there's like an, this is the only like true escort, the rest are like defend or... Right. Yeah, but, um, we found that, like one of the things that we wanted to try to do, just because it was, you know, fun for us to do, was think of alternate ways that, that we can use the super time force, time travel, time out mechanic, in a way that isn't just like, you know, uh, blowing up everything without a purpose. Or like the whole, like basically just like traverse the levels or just get from A to B, start and finish the level. We really wanted to have different takes on on time travel and that's the, the rescue ones, the um, escort mission, the jetpack missions, uh, the different types of boss battles, the final level uh, spoiler that I'm not going to tell you about, yeah. you probably haven't seen it. Um, all of those, like all of those variations, are us trying to figure out, uh, you know, how we can take the mechanic and just twist it in a little, a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left. So the players who were just starting to think, like, oh, I, I totally get how to play this entire game, uh, they get a little bit of variation added in there, and they get a little bit of a uh, different style of challenge, uh, without, you know, but all of it really relies on, again, you doing. You time traveling correctly. Yeah. Uh, I will. I am not sure if I am going to make. We have ten minutes left of the stream today, everybody. And before we get there, I would like to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, we always love it when you, when everybody, you know, in the audience joins us. It's always a lot of fun. And Nathan, thank you as well. And I, I will thank you again at the end of the show. But. I am not sure if we're going to get there, because one of my favorite jet... My favorite jetpack level in the game is the Assault on Heaven yeah. in this. I I love that. But I'm not sure if I'm going to get there in time. Yeah, I mean, it's... There's a lot of levels in the game, and the levels are... When you watch the replays, they're, like, all of 45 seconds. Right! <laughs> but it does, take a, it does take a significant amount of time for you to get through those. Um... Yeah, I'd be, I would be surprised if you were able to beat the level fast enough to get to heaven. Uh, yeah, I, I think that might be pushing it. Oh, come on! Fall, you big yuts! Alright. Uh, to uh, Ag Bavna, who says, when I see the Holy Grail, my mind immediately goes to Monty Python, uh, that is also uh, where a lot of our minds immediately go. So I'm glad that you are thinking along the same lines. I love... Uh, I love Monty Python's Quest for the Holy Grail. It's one of my favorite films of all time. Whoa, come on, get there! Alright, and then, uh, just to let people know, I believe, uh, that we're, we're, we're down to two, yeah, we're down to two codes right now. That's it. And, uh, we only have so many minutes left. So, do we have another idea for a giveaway? I'm curious, fellas. Um... Uh, can I do one? Yeah, yes, Nathan, do absolutely. it. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so let's the first person in the chat to list every platform that Cappy has put a game out on. Oh boy. That's the code. And and just so you guys know, this code is going to be for Xbox One. That's what we're going to do. Unfortunately, you're limited right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I did not do that as well as I could have. Actually, that was a pretty clean run, man. Yeah, it was not. Well, I admit, I, it's the Glorbs. It's getting the Glorbs in the escort or protect the truck missions that I just. Ah, oh, God, it hurts my head. <laughs> There's only so much space I have in there. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I sounded like somebody's grandmother when I said that. That was probably not. Not essential. See, every, okay, everyone in the chat is getting really close, but but everyone, a lot of people are, are missing one or two platforms. Everybody, uh, everybody's forgetting that game that Capybara put out on a Nuon, the Nuon back in. 2000. There, <laughs> there was no Nuon. I can <laughs> I can agree with you. Okay, so so J Rap J Rap is only missing uh, like two platforms. Uh, you gotta think way back. Uh, uh, Gviso is only missing one platform, and that platform 
uh, does not exist anymore. Oh! Gizmondo. <laughs> so, yeah, Brett Nolan is almost there as well. It's close. It's close. Game.com. Uh... Matt, like, what, what did you play games on your, like, uh, I'm trying to think of a question that'll actually, like, not give it all away. Oh, Egg Wutan gave it away right there. Basically, the only thing that was missing was this platform that Egg Wutan mentioned. The closest thing so far has been uh, whoever said everything. <laughs> oh god, I am just doing terribly with this jetpack right now. We still haven't oh. seen the full list yet, right? Yeah, it's J. Rap is the closest by far, and it's and it's not and it's not Symbian. Uh, that is that is technically one one platform that we never did. Okay, if nobody answers it really soon, uh, yeah, let's 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 give it let's let's give it to J. Raff. He's the closest. He was the first closest. All right, all right, we're gonna go with it. You make the rules. It's gonna be J. Raff. Congratulations. Yeah, we actually didn't. We actually didn't make games for Symbian. We made games for uh, for for J. Two M. E. Uh, which was uh, old smartphones before old cell phones before smartphones ever existed. Wow. Yep. That is awesome. Man, I like I I do wonder how many like abandoned flip phone games are just sitting unfinished in a vault somewhere because like around like 2008 they were still getting made, but like that was it. Like, nope. Smartphones are happening. Time to move on. That was a good one. All right, JRAF, I'm sending you your code now. Just look for that in your inbox. Again, it's Xbox One. And uh, enjoy the game. We do have one more code left, just so everyone knows. Uh, meanwhile, we still have lots of super time force things happening. Oh my god, I'm trying to attack heaven. The goal of heaven is to is to blow up angels uh, as much as possible. This, uh, <laughs> we were, were not sure how this level was going to affect our rating. <laughs> It's a tricky one. Well, it's not like you were trying to get it, you know, put out on the Super Nintendo in like 1992. It probably would have been you. Pro you might have run into some problems. So here's an in an interesting factoid about Super Time Force. Um, when you shoot any uh, any human enemy, they basically just go into the fetal position uh, naked and fall off the screen. Really? There is an actual five pixel bum. And that got us our nudity, uh, nudity descriptor in ESRB. You so, are kidding me. Five pixel butts count as nudity to the ESRB, folks. <laughs> the more you know about pixel butts. Five pixel butts. Five yeah. pixel butts. For everybody out there who's a burgeoning designer, uh, in the chat, gotta watch out for them pixel butts, y'all. It is, it, it, that might be my next band name. Is five pixel butts? Five, five pixel, pixel butts. butts. Oh, oh, get out of there! Yeah! Nice. Get to hell with your arrows, angels. <laughs> Everybody get out of the way. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that ERSRB loved grading our game because, uh, quite frankly, we had a lot of ridiculous stuff in there. Uh, in the scene where you save Merlin, uh, you didn't necessarily see it, but if you... Uh, if you don't save Merlin and just watch, the executioner will actually chop Merlin's head off and then take his cowl off and just barf nonstop. <laughs> oh my God! Really? Yeah, that was our that was our kind of we. I think there's probably barf in every one of our games ever. <laughs> well, I mean, Critter Crunch is 95% barf. Yeah, it's it's pretty barf heavy, that's for sure. <laughs> Well, everybody, we have just one minute left here today on our Super Time Force stream. Uh, Nathan, thank you again for, for coming out uh, and for joining us when the studio is about to go on some much-needed vacation time. Uh, only, only half of them. The rest of them still have to finish below, so they, they get to watch everybody else take vacations. So, Suckers. Uh, Suckers. Nathan. Right, well, uh, thanks a lot for having me. Uh, Thanks a lot to the whole the whole chat that uh, that was actually super fun and I tried to answer as much as I could but 
Uh, you feel free to hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Cappy underscore Nathan if you have more questions about the game, uh, which is available now for Xbox One and Xbox 360, so grab it, please, and thank you if you like fun games. Nathan, what's going on? Oh my god, I beat Heaven. Oh no, I didn't. I, I you're, died. You're so close. I'm so close. I, I gotta get there. Nathan, uh, speaking of Below, you know, when's, uh, when's Below coming out, guys? Okay? You got any news for us there? <laughs> we have we have zero news date, but you'll definitely be seeing a lot more of it uh, as you know E3 is coming up. So we're going to be showing some stuff there and probably start doing some streams and stuff uh, after that. Uh, you know, it's it's coming along really well, and we're super super excited to show people more of the game. Uh, it's pretty much the exact opposite of this game. Uh, yes. In some ways. <laughs> having having played a little bit of Below at PAX East, I can confidently say. That it is, it is the exact opposite of, of Super Time Force in every way except for one. And the way in which it is very, very similar is that Below is not afraid to punish you at yep. a moment's notice. Uh, you, gotta, you gotta watch out, because that game is tricksy. Um, yeah, everybody, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, we love it when you come to Joystick Streams. We always love doing this. And if you like free games, which is a thing that we like to do here on the show, why don't you come back on Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be playing a little game called Tropico 5, which is a brand new entry in the strategy series about being a vicious despot. And uh, we're going to have three full retail copies of Tropico 5 to give out. And speaking of vacation, Joystick News Content Director Alexander Slewinski is actually coming back from vacation Who does to, to play Tropico 5 with us. He is actually pausing vacation to play this game, and that's what a crazy person does. Right. Uh, so that will be 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursday. Please come out. And, uh, and hang with us. Uh, yeah, and go to joystick.com. We have a lot of fun going on this week. Our, our uh, editor-in-chief, Ludwig Kitzman, put up a review of Wolfenstein, The New Order today. Uh, our reviews content director, Richard Mitchell, put up a review of Transistor, the latest game from Bastion Studios' Supergiant Games today. And, yeah, all that good stuff. And if you want to keep finding out about good stuff when we're not streaming, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook. And if you're that kind of Google Plus sort of person, you can follow us there, too. Just go to all three. It's Joystick with a Q. Uh, my name is Anthony John Agnello. You can follow me on Twitter at A John Agnello. Mike Suzik is also on Twitter, and you can find him at at Mike Suzik. Uh, Nathan gave you his Twitter, but you can also follow Cappy Games at Cappy Games on Twitter. Um, yeah, so we will see you on Thursday, everybody. Thank you so much for coming by. Nathan, thank you again, man. It was a blast. Thanks, everyone, for, for streaming along, and thank you, folks, for having me. Super fun times, uh, and you actually got really good at the end of the stream now, so... <laughs> Yay, Anthony! <laughs> you, you, you did it, Anthony. You did it. Hooray! So proud. So proud. And, Mike, thank you for uh, thank you for manning the chat, man. That was pretty awesome. Man, I don't know how you do this. It gets so <laughs> intense. All you people here that are all here for the codes and for watching some glorious gaming action... You just, you guys are chatterboxes. I don't know how you do it, Anthony. <laughs> well, you want to know how I do it? I take a deep breath and I go,